Located in the Wells Fargo building, Slow Roasted Boca Dios has become a downtown favorite. Hi, and welcome to La Mesa Encantada. I'm Cece Fox, your host. Today, we're at a nationally recognized local gem, Boca Dios Slow Roasted. Come on, let's check it out. Hey, welcome to Boca Dios. What can I get for you today? So, let's see. I'm gonna order three different things to try. All right, cool. So what can I get for you? Should I maybe do a breakfast and then two sandwiches? Yeah, it's... let's do breakfast. I recommend the heart stopper. Um, go red chili over uh, over medium. That's bomb. Red chili, yeah. yeah. And I heard something about Roadrunner style. What does that mean? Roadrunner style means uh, two fried eggs. Oh, cool. I love that. You guys are so New Mexico. That's huge to me. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do some sandwiches. I heard about the Reuben. My mom told me about that one. I gotta do that one. Okay. So also, what would be the last one? Maybe. I mean, if you're really hungry, these are our heavy hitters. The club. It has pork, turkey, lettuce, tomato, avocado, two types of cheeses, two types of sauces on a Texas toast, and it's all local. It's all Fano local bread. So I mean, we try to keep it all local, keep it all fresh. Okay, perfect. Those are my three. Sold. salt. You always do it to taste, you know what I mean? Right. Everybody has different flavors. And a little bit of dried oregano. That's what it is with that fun, I think. And granulated garlic. You could also, my aunt could actually put uh, fresh garlic in the blender. She, she uh, blends up all the chili. So oh, so it's already, already yeah. integrated. Oh. So basically what you do is you get this, you put it on the heat, and if you want to thicken it, you can thicken it with the roux. I think in mine with cornstarch because you have a lot of roux-free people, mm -hmm. and it makes it for everybody to be able to eat. Awesome, and then not only that, but I see you just kind of, oh, you know, I hey, I, I you know, I that's the real, real. <laughs> <laughs> I look to see, you know, how much chili we have in there, how much we got to make, and then if you have a little so, how big is red and green chili to you? Oh my god, that's my life. I could literally, I could probably eat red chili every day of my life. You're like, is this a trick I question? Have, <laughs> I have no problem eating red chili every day. Oh, look I, at that I, color, it's beautiful. My all time favorite is actually my mom with a little bit of carnitas in it. Oh, there you go. So, she does the red chili, of course. Sometimes potatoes, sometimes not. And we're in the middle of a lot of potatoes with this book. Yeah. Good heat. So good. Has that sweet heat. Mm -hmm. That's Very good. Perfect. Boom. So you are from New Mexico. Yes. Where where exactly are you from? I'm in born and raised New Mexican. I was born here in Albuquerque and my family is from Hurley, New Mexico, down south, Grant County, by Silver City. <laughs> Nobody knows. If you blinked, you'd miss it if you went by. It's an old uh, mining town. Uh, they mine uh, cobre, copper. So my whole family, they worked in the mines. Uh, my mom worked in the mine, my grandpa retired, my uncles, my tia, everybody retired from the mines. So a lot of my family worked in the mines that's too. It. I mean, that's all we know how to do is work, and that's what I was taught my whole life. You gotta work to get where you're gonna go and do what you think. So, early New Mexico made it happen for me um, to teach that part of it. Um, we moved up here in Albuquerque, good old Duke City. Moved up here uh, when I was about nine years old. Wow, uh, and she's been cooking since yep. she was about 12? Yeah, probably before that, but like I got in the kitchen when I was 12, like to actually get paid for it. Yeah. But my mom, wow. she was a single mom of four until we met my dad and uh, moved up to Albuquerque. So we used to have to fend for ourselves. My mom was in right. the mine working day shifts, night shifts, graveyard yeah. shifts. So it was four kids, we had to make, we had to make do. We right. had to make, make it happen for each other. And then now you have your own restaurant. There was a lot of things that happened before that, like you had a stroke, right? Yeah, I was actually working here, because I've been in the kitchen my whole life, but I was actually working in this building when this happened. I was actually on a camping Oh, this trip. building? Yeah, I was in this kitchen right here. Um, I was camping with my family in uh, Arizona, and I don't know, I just, something happened. I don't know what happened, but I drove myself back. And I got back, went to the doctor the next day, and they told me I had a mild stroke. Oh my goodness. So, you know, things happened. I was 32, uh, but it gave me the drive. It made me the drive to push myself, say, okay, you're gonna die for your for your for what you love to do. You gotta die for your family, not for everybody else. Right. And I mean, uh, like we had talked about it, I mean, if that wouldn't have happened, you know, a lot of other things wouldn't happen. So sometimes, you know, setback is just getting you ready right. for it's a all, great it's, comeback, it's, right? It's, it's all fate. 
You right. Know, you don't know what is I happening. And, and sometimes things happen that don't make you so happy, but you're not realizing that was a good thing that happened to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Part yeah. of your story, you it's, know? It's a good thing that happened to you, and it's a good thing that you survived something. It doesn't matter what journey it is, mm -hmm. but you survived it and you can keep moving on. Yeah. And that's what it's about. You it, know, you got to push yourself. And you Mexicans, that's all we know how to do. Yeah, I mean. It's about survival. I think if anything right. went down in the whole entire world, <laughs> we would be okay. Yeah, we know how to, like, mm -hmm. do everything, right? Survive. Our families know how to hunt. We know how to fish. <laughs> You know? Right, and it's special to us. It's not just something that, you know, it's like a way of survival. You're right, you know. So your first restaurant was where at? It was actually in the South Valley. I uh, started working out of a place called the Economic Development Center. Um, I started catering uh, because I, for, before that, I was selling burritos out of the back of my car because I didn't know how, what else to do. And I'm like classically French trained. All these wow. <laughs> All these Ooh things. la la. My mom, <laughs> my mom told me, Mija, why don't you just go make burritos and see what happens? I said, Mom, I can't walk up to a burrito place. I mean, to somewhere to sell burritos to a, to, I was all look at me. I said, I'm not going to walk up and the, you know, all the guys want to say, hey, let me eat your burrito. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. You but know now it's like, hey, now, what's up? I have, up? More, I have more man crushes on me than I don't even uh, know. See? But, but that's the way it happened. And so South Valley, just, we started uh, catering and within two weeks of working there, they asked us to go into uh, work the little sandwich shop that, that was in there. Wow. And it was more cold cut. I couldn't cook the way I wanted to because you had to pay by the hour. So it was a little expensive. But, yeah. you know, and then we started feeding kids. I started feeding 50 kids. My daughter's school called me and asked me to play, uh, serve 50 kids breakfast. And I thought, dang, that'll save, that'll pay my rent. Man, but no yes, what. how many can only feed one or two kids in the girl. morning? You know, 50 kids. I, I fed 50, <laughs> 50 for that six months, and in three more months, I fed 500. Wow. And 500. then a year after that, a thousand. A year after that, 1,250 oh kids breakfast and lunch every day. Wow, that's amazing. From scratch. And I wow. fed for seven years, I fed kids. Yes, and from scratch. See, that's what I think is amazing too. She's like local. She cooks from scratch. She gets a lot of things from like the local, the local yeah. when, when season, bakeries. When, yeah, and bakeries when the season's in. I get my. Um, I get all my tomatoes, and you know, when the season, tomato season is in, that's my yeah. favorite season. Yeah. There's so many different varieties from here in New Mexico, and now so many more things are coming out that you never even knew you could grow in New Mexico. Oh man, I'm so exciting. It's like, it's so exciting the things you can cook and the things you're doing. So why did you pick a sandwich shop? Why did you pick the name? Hmm. Because I love anything between two pieces of bread. <laughs> um, I love sandwiches, I love burritos, and bocadillos in Spanish means small bites, like a small sandwich. Oh, cool. Right? So when I saw bocadillos, I was like, Dude, that's, that's, that's what the name is. Yeah. And then you throw, so roast it in front of it. Yeah. Then you know what kind of sandwich you're getting. Right. It's not cold cuts. You don't have bologna, which I love bologna. <laughs> <laughs> I use that at my own house. But, uh, you know, you, you wanted something that's going to be meaty and something good. You know, if you look at New York style dalis, stuff like that, LA, these places, you know, you can't get a sandwich unless you go there. Right. Otherwise, you go to Subway, and we ain't no Subway. Right, right. I mean, we like quality out here in New Mexico. Speaking of New York though, okay, let's talk about that. So she's been on a bunch of shows, like national television shows, you guys. I think that she makes me proud. Yesterday I told her she almost made me cry, gave me a little tear fall because we were talking tear, that we girl. can only have one tear fall. But um, she makes me really, really proud myself and I know she makes a lot of you guys proud. I mean, you guys messaged me and told me that you love her and everybody that comes in here says that they love her. So don't be afraid to come in here and meet her because she's always so uh, grateful that you guys are here and just so happy that you guys recognize a local celebrity. Oh, no? <laughs> but New York. So tell us about New York. You got to stay a little longer yeah, and it was I, your I, first time I out got there. To go to New York for the first time. Otherwise, I would have never gone there. Um, I wanted to go, but that's like, you know, that's a hard dream. But I got to go to New York to be on the Food Network and uh, do chops. So I went out there to do chops and I ended up coming out with the win. Yeah! Was, <laughs> New Mexico! So that, was, that was crazy, you know, I couldn't, I, it still sometimes makes me, you know, wrap my head around it, like, what did, what just happened? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand until my dad explained it to me. He says, you know, Mija, you went out there to go have a good time. He says, it's like when we go hunting. He says, we go and we have a great time. But if we get something, that's just a bonus. Yeah. So, you, know, you just got something. Yes. So it just made it a bonus because otherwise it would have been the time of your life. No. no matter what, win, lose, or draw. I'm not, you know, it's not about winning for me. It's about experience. Yeah. And I mean, I want to say thank you, like not just for me, but any other loyal 
New Mexicans out there that watched you and was just like, yes, and not only is she winning, but she's representing, representing New Mexico. Like, come on, you know, there's those people who, you know, make it, those people who make it and represent. And I'm one of those people, and I'm so glad that you're one of those people. And so I'm glad to eat here today. Right on, let's do it. I'm gonna make you some bowls. So red and green chili are a huge staple over here, and they're gonna show us exactly how to make the red. It's All right. beautiful. I was gonna say normal New Mexicans make their red chili. We do it like grandma taught us, we do it like my mama taught us. This is the only way we know how to do it. So basically we get our red chili. I actually drive to Hatch to go get my chili. To awesome. Sure it's whatever I want. Um, so what we do is we soak it. Uh, we soak it overnight and then the next morning we boil it up just a little bit. Um, get it all strained down. My mom uses one of those for her jelly. This is the best thing ever, my yes. mom. My mom finds these at the yard sales because you know they're that's so expensive. <laughs> or that's the only place you can find them anymore. Yeah, they're so expensive. So what we do is we strain it off. Oh my goodness, that color looks right? so beautiful. That's what you want. And yes. You know, and the, I just you know learned that the difference is like these chilies, they're real light colored. And the reason that they're real light colored and the reason the chili's so light colored, almost orange, is because it was sun dried. Oh, okay. So if you get the darker chilies, those were oven dried, and your chili comes out super, super dark. Oh, what a difference. I never knew that. You learn something new every yeah. day. So basically, we strain it off. Mmm, that looks so delicious. <laughs> I add just because of my mom. So this is James, the owner's nephew, and he's going to show us the burrito that we'll be making. What's the burrito? It's the name of the burrito? Heartstopper. So it has chorizo, oh, sausage, and bacon in it, and two over medium eggs. Okay, awesome. That sounds delicious. Look at all these ingredients. Yeah. It looks amazing. Okay, so um, I love the thing that you said, Roadrunner style. I think that needs to be all across New Mexico. And what is it? A Roadrunner? Roadrunner it style. Is, it's a Roadrunner, so it's over two over medium eggs, man. Over two over medium eggs. I love it. And so that that's your logo too, right? Yep. Yeah, the Roadrunner. Oh my gosh, look at this, you guys. Look at that red chili. We just had a part in that. You guys witnessed it. You're right here with us. So we got these eggs. Oh wait, hold up. I I was gonna help flip the egg, but there's two eggs. And we just figured that out with the Roadrunner. <laughs> Well, at least if anything, you guys we saw this one. Yes, live. <laughs> okay, it, now? Yes, oh my gosh. You got it. Okay. Oh, almost! You got one. You got one. one out of two ain't bad. Yep, it's not bad. Oh, man. No worries. That's not bad. That was exciting. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys, it's gonna be good. So it has chorizo, bacon, sausage. oh, sausage, and bacon. And, bacon. and bacon. And then you get red or green chili. And we got red, so we did everything. Oh, I chorizo know. and red. Oh, look, yeah. not too shabby over there. Nope. Might have a new profession. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll leave it to everybody else because sometimes it gets too hot in the kitchen, and like they say, it gets too hot in the kitchen, you know? <laughs> Oh man, so how often do you make these? This is a pretty popular yeah, burrito. I mean, we make them at least five, six of these ones a day. All least. right. I saw yeah. I saw a burrito my friend posted of, from you guys and it had red chili and cheese yeah, and it was melting together and it looked so delicious. It looked very delicious, so let's see. <laughs> okay, so awesome. So you were also with your mom and you guys were on Guy's Grocery Games? Yeah. I think so many people recognize you out here in New Mexico and it's so exciting for me because I love that you guys cooked with green chili. How was it being on the show? It was really exciting. It was really fun. Um, it's really neat because you get you get a chance to just kind of like think on your feet and just kind of go with the flow because when you're there it doesn't really feel like you're there yeah so it's, just like it's really surreal so how you're fun just, you're doing all this stuff and it kind of feels like you're acting and it feels a little bit silly sometimes i cussed a lot <laughs> um but it was, a lot, it was a lot of fun and you and your mom have a wonderful relationship i think that's where a lot of uh, new mexicans like were like that's me and my mom you know like yeah. Like Mijita and Hita and like, you know, just like, you know, the way you guys worked together. I mean, that's like a New Mexican kitchen that you guys represented on like national television. Like it's, it's crazy because like you talk to other families from like other states and they're, they're like, oh, I'm not close with my mom or they're like, oh, me and my family aren't close. We only see each other on holidays. And it's like, dude, you can't be like that with your family. Like 
Yeah. Well, being from here, everybody you meet, like all your friends, they become your family. So. Yeah, our cultures and traditions are so important to us, yeah. you know. And so your mom has, you know, passed down the love of cooking to you. So you now are almost finished with college? Yeah, this is my last semester. I only have two more weeks. Awesome. Thanks. The Lord. Um, <laughs> but my, my degree is in advanced baking and pastry. So Fantastic. I'm learning, I'm learning all cake decorating, laminated doughs, like all kinds of crazy stuff. And also she, um, you know, as being a writer and stuff and creating the book, I think that's fantastic. I think that everybody should at least have a little notebook with some of these recipes and different stuff yeah. like that. So your idea for that, what what are the plans for that? Or? Girl, I haven't even started on a segment. Um, I don't know, it's just kind of like, like I try to remember things, like everything that my family tells me is important. Right, but same. There's some some things that like kind of stick out a little bit more than others. So I want to be sure to write those down and just listen to stories of my grandma talking because now that I'm older, I'm hearing all kinds of just crazier stories of like back in the day from my great grandma, my aunt, my, yeah. my grandma, my grandpa. Very smart, it's very smart. Yeah, I think so it's, it's very important. Remembering what they tell you and because everything has to do with food. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I that's agree. The like, stories are usually shared with, like, around, with, is around food. Yeah, no matter what there is, like a wedding or any type of event, there's food. So yeah. thank you for sharing that with thank us. You. And thank you for sharing Bocadillo with us. And it was very interesting to meet you today. Thank Yay! You. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we're making the club now. It has a uh, floral to turkey, floral to pork. We're going to add a couple pieces of bacon on there. It has a honey mustard, a chipotle mayo, cheddar, and avocado cheese. Oh my goodness, two types of cheese. Slow roasted, slow roasted bacon. Ah, oh, bringing it to life. <laughs> Love it. So what do you want us to call you? Would you like us to call you Moose or? <laughs> or Amber? <laughs> so she she is the owner's niece and you can tell that everybody just has so much love for each other here. It's totally like family and I think it's amazing. So that was a little thing that they were saying, call her Moose. So <laughs> I had to give her a little, you Even know, cariño. Hi. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yummy. While we're melting the cheese, I'll just put some mustard and mayo. Okay, mustard and mayo. <laughs> honey mustard. Yum. Oh, honey mustard, that ah, big difference. And then I love this idea you guys have. Oh, and the chipotle can't mayo. wait. Chipotle mayo. Have a lettuce, chipotle. Tomato, avocado over here. Yum. All together, all the flavors you can. Oh. Touch of love, because that's one big thing, is it's made with love here. Oh, yep. You know, as I was talking to Marie yesterday, I asked her, what do you think the difference between a lot of foods and New Mexican foods are? And she said, we cook our food with love. So I agree, we cook our food with love. Just, you know, we're, we're a lot of family, we do a lot of things with love, so we have respect for one another. Oh my goodness, look at that. Ah! That looks fantastic. And she's the one that be cooking all this stuff for you guys when you guys come in, so you guys better be nice to her. <laughs> Look how good that is. Oh, man. Hey, best friend. <laughs> Yum. Look. Ah, yay. And this is her favorite, too, so come in and try it. Yummy. All right, so now to try the food. Come on, let's go try these little numbers. They're going to be delicious. I already know, but you go. Got to make... Gotta make sure, you know. All right, so we're gonna start with the heart stopper. Let's see, you can see that red chili in there. Oh my gosh, look at this burrito. It's not a wimpy burrito, that's for sure. Oh my goodness, look at that. Mm. That red chili. <laughs> mm. It makes a big difference. This is a fan favorite, one of my mom's favorites. So let's see, look at that color, look how beautiful. Mm. Yes. <laughs> mm. You could 
those flavors are so delicious that I don't even think I can explain to you. You have to come here, down here and try it yourself because I've heard about it, but it's not like a Reuben I've ever tried before. Not only is it more beautiful than any Reuben I've ever tried before, but that is so delicious. And the rye, you can't even really tell, it just has a little, a little taste of it that just makes everything tied together perfectly. Okay, now for the club. Look at this big bad boy. Oh my goodness. Okay, seriously, anybody working downtown, if you were like really hungry, <laughs> really hungry, yeah, here we go. All right, let's try this. Oh, the avocado, the tomato, the, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, that surprised me. It's like, um, <laughs> I don't know, it has all the meats in there combined together to make kind of like a stew taste, but not, I don't know, it's so delicious. It's not if I can't say Thanksgiving, I can't say, I don't know what it tastes like, but it is so good. The juice is in there. I mean, you get two for one, three for one. This one is, get down here. Oh, All right, everybody, so this is part of the show. This is my mom, Marie. My mom, my sister, <laughs> and my babies. And her and mom. Baby. <laughs> so all the moms, so they, they're they part of us and our cooking and stuff like that. So we wanted to bring them into part of it. So I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Another episode of La Mesa Encantada. So come see us at... Slow